Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. This is part two of the Restoring the Grand Prix series, and today we're going to be actually fixing it to make it run. I got all of these components right here, and this was $178 for all of the liquids, for all of the parts. Actually, I actually have more parts coming tomorrow, but $178 for everything we're gonna do. And the first thing we actually need to fix is this tire right here, because a deflating tire is not good. In order to repair it, we're gonna need to take the wheel off. So before we actually jack the car up, you wanna loosen all of the lug nuts here so that once the car is lifted up, it'll be easier to take off. I don't have one of those like a X tire remover thing, so I'm just gonna have to make it work with this ratchet. <laughs> take it back, I'm just gonna use the impact wrench. God, these things are put on there really tight. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get them off. Okay, you know what they say? When in doubt, use a cheater bar. I'm hearing metal groan, which I don't like. Oh, there we go, it's coming out, perfect. I just need to get them started and the drill can take them off. This is really important if you've never worked on a car before, but you wanna make sure your jack is against the frame of the car and not like a body panel. If you put it here, it'll just go right through and you'll crack your body. You wanna make sure it's on a nice thick piece of metal. Be sure to go slow while you raise it up. Just make sure that it's on a good spot. Okay, now that we've got the wheel off, what I'm gonna do is I wanna take this jack stand. This is basically just a metal holder to hold your car up. I'm gonna put it under there just to make sure that if the jack fails, the whole car doesn't come slamming down on the important stuff. You know, funny enough, this is actually my first time looking at the underside of this car. While we've got this wheel off, we're gonna take this opportunity to actually inspect the brake, the rotors, the brake lines, all of the suspension components. Okay, so we definitely need new shocks because this is just, in the meantime, we need to come to this tire and we need to find out where the hole is so that we can actually repair it. And to do that, we're gonna spray some soapy water on it. This right here is what we're looking for. You see all those bubbles that are popping up? That's where the hole is. I'm gonna spray the rest of the tire just to make sure that there's not more than one hole, but I'm pretty sure that's it. That right there is the cops. I'm curious what they are gonna say. You can see here that we have a nail in the tire right there. The nail is actually uh, sort of sealing up the hole so that air isn't able to come through. But we need to pull that out so we can patch it. So what can I do for you? Do you need help with anything? No, I'm just uh, repairing my tire and showing YouTube how to do it. <laughs> nice, all right, yeah. dude. All right, man, well, good luck. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Huh. That went easier than I expected it would be. Okay, let's see if I can pull this thing out. It's in there deep. Okay, you can see with the piece removed, air is just coming out. This guy right here, I think it was like $7.99 at Walmart. This is a tire repair plug kit. There are three components. This guy is basically something you just jab in the hole and get it up in there. It's got serrated edges. This is to make the edges of the tire really rough so that this stuff, which is like a uh, fiber with like really thick glue on it, you can put this in the hole and the hole will keep this in place. So let's go clean up the area. You stick your little glue strand inside the hole. It's hard because, you know, it's got glue on it. There we go. Once you've got this threaded about halfway through, we're gonna stab it in there, which is going to take these two sides, and it's going to bend them backward, which is going to make this twice as thick, and then we're going to pull out really quickly, and there's like a knife on the edge of this to where it'll cut it in half. It'll make more sense when I show you how this actually works. Where did our hole go? Right here. Now we're gonna take this, and we're just gonna jam it in there. I might need a hammer or something to get it in. <clears throat> now that we've got them in there, we're gonna pull this out really quickly. And you'll notice how it just leaves them inside the hole with their little gunk stuff. 
we're gonna cut the excess off and then this is a fully repaired tire. Some people will tell you that it's temporary and you shouldn't leave your tire like this. It's fine, I promise. We will pump the tire back up and then prove that it is holding air. There we go, she is inflated. Now let's actually test to make sure that the hole isn't leaking anymore. I don't see any bubbles coming out. We did it. Now we'll just have to see if that actually lasts. It is possible that like the road will cause it to get pulled out. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure this is good. And it costs $7 rather than the 150 it would take to actually replace the tire. Before we put this back on though, we're gonna clean the inside of this because this is not something I did when I was actually cleaning the car. Okay, this was stupid. For the rest of the tires, we're gonna brush them off while they're dry so that the dirt can just flake off rather than turning into mud. <laughs> With access to running water, it's a little bit less bad. You can see here there still is some pitting and some rust. We'll take care of that later when we're actually painting the rim. Right now, I just wanted to get it clean. Get all the dirt off of it. What I'm doing right now isn't all that useful, like this stuff will just get dirty again, but it does help me find rust spots to assess how rusty this car actually is. You can't really see that if it's covered in dirt. The cop came back. After inspecting, I think the only thing I need to change is this strut right here. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and put the tire back on. You wanna put them back on in a crisscross pattern. So you do this side, and then you come over here. Then you come over here. There we go, now that the tire is fixed, the next thing we need to fix is this windshield right here because we're not legally allowed to drive with this like this. Now, I wanna let you guys know that I do not expect this to work. I fully expect that this will fail and we will need to replace the entire windshield but I wanna try it just to see how well it works. You need a bright sunny day for this to work because it uses UV light to cure the resin. Just so that we have a before and after, this is what the crack looks like beforehand. You can see you've got all of the cracks right here and one that comes out not quite to the edge, but this is what it looks like beforehand. Now we just let the resin cure. I think it says for like 10 minutes. Okay, so this crack right here definitely almost completely went away. I can hardly see it right now. These ones are a little bit lighter, but hmm. Let's see what it looks like from the inside. It's still visible, but it's less visible, like it did take part of it away. It is disappointing, but it's not unexpected. With that out of the way, let's come out of the hood and start working on the engine. You guys will remember one of the problems with the hood is that it doesn't actually stay up. So first thing we need to do is we need to fix the struts on both sides of this. If you guys go into an auto parts store like AutoZone, they'll try to sell you these things for $25 a piece. But I went online at an online wholesaler and I was able to get these for $6 each, so $12 for the struts. Do you see these bands right here? You just take like a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver and you pull them off. Then you just pop the bottom side off. You want the thin metal part to be on the bottom. 
And there you go, it just slots in. We gotta go take care of the other one though before it'll actually hold itself up. Oh yeah, this one is definitely bent and broken. Whatever, we got new ones. I'm gonna use my head to hold this up. Small side goes on the bottom, and then tall side goes on the top. There we go, the hood should now hold itself up. I'm curious if it'll open itself. The first thing we need to do is we need to check the power steering pump because if you guys will remember, every time we start the car, it screams. It's not supposed to sound like that. So we have some power steering fluid and a pump to get to it because the engineers of this engine, they put the power steering pump reservoir at the very bottom of the back of the engine. So it's hard to get your hands back there to actually check the fluid. To help get access to the reservoir, we're gonna take off the coolant tank right here. That right there is our power steering pump. Let's go check the fluid levels. Very low. I wanna get all of the old fluid out and put new fluid in. So I'm gonna use this pump, stick it inside the reservoir and then pump the old fluid out. Okay, so I've decided that this pumping mechanism, this little bulb right here, it doesn't work very well. So I'm literally just gonna use my mouth to suck this out. Stick one end in right there. It's a long tube, so I won't get it in my mouth. It'll mostly just fill up the tube. I was wrong. At the end of the day, it's just oil. Yeah, this stuff is like brown and yellow. It's good that we're getting rid of it. This is how it should look, clear as water. Now we're gonna go turn the car, turn the wheel from one end to the left, back and forth to get that circulating and then we'll cycle it again. There we go, we got all of the old fluid cycled out. Let's fill it up with new good fluid. Once you've got it going, it works like a siphon where I don't need to use my breath anymore, but it takes a sec to actually get it there. While we wait for that to do its thing, let's clean the rest of this stuff. Let's go cycle all that new fluid through the pump. I can tell that it's already much quieter than it was earlier. I am genuinely not fond of the engineers who put this all the way back here. Next up, I'm pretty sure we are running out of fluid because this should be to this line when it's cold, but it's basically empty. So let's check out how much coolant we got in here. I don't even see any fluid in there. We are running low on coolant. Oh, and it also looks like it's really rusty in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a full flush of the coolant system because I don't want this gunk floating around in my radiator. Gonna take all of the old liquid and we're gonna put it in the container and we'll recycle it. I think there's like a sporting event going on. We might need to postpone this until tomorrow. We will finish this project tomorrow then. And, and boom, there we go. Next day, nobody's here. Let's go get this radiator cleaned. Now, before we actually get to draining the fluid in the radiator, we're gonna fill up the washer fluid container right here. That's the thing that spits out of the windshield washers because I need this container. Let's see if we can do this with one hand without spilling. Hey, look at that. Perfect, now we have an empty container so we can take water from that hose and put it in here to wash everything out. This is gonna be how we transport water. We are gonna take the top off of the radiator. Be very careful when you're doing this if you've been letting the engine run because this could be really hot and steam could come out and burn you. But I know that I just turned the car on so it's not hot. Okay. Yeah, it is just nasty. We're gonna drain all of this fluid. Now, air can get in from the top. We're gonna come underneath and we're gonna drain it. Yeah, that water is brown and yucky. I just wanna catch a little bit of it so you guys can see how nasty it is. Okay, I'm actually surprised. That actually looks fairly clean. It's supposed to look like a, like a bright orange or a bright green and it looks fairly clean, surprisingly. One of the first things I do notice though is that there should have been a lot more fluid in here 
than there is. Um, looks like we were definitely running low on fluid, but let's go fix that. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to add some radiator flush. This is basically a cleaner, so we can get out all of this gunk from the radiator. What this says to do is that if we want to do a deep cleaning of our radiator, we need to put this in the radiator and we need to let it sit for a couple of days while we use the car. So we're not going to finish cleaning this today. We're just gonna put this in and then we'll come back in a couple of days and change it. And then we need to fill the rest of the radiator with water, which is why this comes in. Now this right here, what we've got in the radiator is basically straight water. It has no antifreeze. So if it gets below freezing out here, um, we could end up cracking our radiator. So we need to be careful to not let it get cold outside, I guess. That's not something I have control over. What you wanna do is you wanna pour the water in until it looks like it's coming out of the, sp the spout. And then you'll wait for it to bubble back up because it's gotta get into all of the cracks of the radiator. And we'll fill it back up. Then I'll pour the rest in the reservoir. Lastly, we're gonna go turn the car on, turn the heat on, and let all of this fluid circulate around the engine, around the heating core, and through the radiator. Heat all the way up. Right now, this flushing fluid that we put in there, it's circulating through the radiator, it's going up into the engine, it's going into the heating core back there, and it's coming all the way back. And it's getting all of the gunk, and it's going to pull it to the bottom so that when we drain it, all of that comes out. So then we can put fresh fluid in. I think I'm hearing a clicking noise. Let's take the engine cover off and investigate what's clicking. It did not sound like it was the engine itself. It sounded like it was a plastic piece on top of the engine that was just banging against it. It's this thing. I think that's what my check engine light is. I believe this is my EVAP purge solenoid. So when there's fumes from the gas line, this is what actually sends it back. I believe this is what's causing my check engine light. And I have another piece in the, my trunk. Mm -hmm. Good, I was getting a little bit worried that I had rod knock again. And then it just slides up. If I had to guess, I would say that this right here is the reason he was willing to sell me this car for $2,000. Because when he turned the car on, it made a clicking sound, so he was worried he had rod knock. He tried to replace this a couple times and it didn't go away. So I think that this little non-important piece right here just saved me $1,000 on a car. It's really not important. I'm pretty sure you can just take the entire piece out and the car will still run. It just helps with emissions, makes it more like planet friendly if you have that piece in. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the dirt on this one, I think this is probably the original one that came with the car and he just left it in the trunk when he sold it to me. Slot that on right there like that. This should clear up the check engine light and make the clicking noise stop. I will go ahead and clear the code and we'll see if it comes back. Okay, the code's been cleared. The engine is up to temperature. That means the fluid is circulating. I think we're done. Now the fluid that we drain down here is toxic, so you can't just like dump this in the grass. You've gotta intentionally recycle it. Yeah, that's strange. This isn't nearly as dirty as I assumed it was. I guess the previous owner, he drained the fluid, he just didn't flush the radiator to where there's lots of gunk caked on the inside of the radiator, but the fluid itself was pretty clean. Because yeah, this is a bright orange. I'm driving the car around just to test it and I'm noticing that my air conditioner doesn't work. This is the first time I've had to use the air conditioner since I bought this in December, but it's just blowing out room temperature air. Okay, so update. I have some good news and I have some bad news. I hope you guys all, I've got tools everywhere. My car's a mess. I'll start with the bad news. I need to postpone this restoration series. I know that you guys have been looking forward to watching me wrap the car and fix the paint. I need to pause that because of the good news. I got an offer to go to Norway and tour the Arctic Circle. Um, somebody that saw my Alaska videos, they often go to the Arctic Circle, and they offered to give me a tour 
Um, everything's already been booked. All I had to do was buy plane tickets to Norway and it's set. The thing is, is that's in two weeks. I, let, I fly out, I think on April 17th. So um, I don't have time to actually finish this. I don't have time to fix the bumper. I don't have time to wrap it. I've barely got enough time to actually figure out what I'm gonna do because I've got to get a new tent. I've got to get new electronics. I've got so much stuff I need to figure out. I thought I had more time before I go back to Europe, but this just uh, accelerated the timeline. So. Okay, so the way that this is going to work, the way that this is going to work is we're going to go up to Norway, we're going to go explore the Arctic Circle, I'm going to have to have all of my winter gear, my gloves, my jackets, and then as soon as we're done exploring the Arctic Circle over the course of like a couple of weeks, I'm going to fly to Bulgaria and get my bike, where it's much warmer, it's much warmer in Bulgaria, so I'm going to need to ditch most of my winter gear. I will be bringing my sleeping bag. So yeah, super spontaneous, and it's disappointing because I was looking forward to fixing this car, but the car will be here when I get back, we can fly back when we're done in Bulgaria, and we can fix the car then. As for where I'm gonna put the car, because you guys know that I was planning on building a shed out in the desert and then storing my car there, I don't have fucking time for that. So I'm just gonna have to find a friend somewhere around here and hope that they're willing to store my car for six to eight months. <sighs> I have a lot of work to do. Regretfully, this is another thing I don't get to do. I had this bike sent to me. They're doing it for free anyway. It's the same company that made the previous bike, but there's a solar eclipse that's happening over the United States. I wanted to take this bike, ride out to see the solar eclipse, and then like ride back or something. But I don't have time for that because it'll take more than two weeks to go out there and see this. So now I've got this bike and I don't know what to do with it. I imagine we'll save this for a future thing where we try to ride a bike across the United States, but I don't have time for that. 